What's up everyone? I know it's been a while, but James doesn't let me on this channel unless I'm installing something. So I figured out a way how to get back. Yeah, don't get too used to it. He's been getting a lot of questions on how to hook up speakers to an amplifier. It's a pretty basic subject, but there appears to be some confusion on how to do it. So we're gonna take you through the simple steps of how to connect speakers to an amplifier. So since this is a hypothetical amplifier installation, we're gonna assume we've already run our speaker wires to each one of the speaker locations. Now, if you're just wanting to amplify an existing stock stereo, you would run four speaker wires to the factory radio location or to the factory amplifier location. Make the connections to the speakers as those wires are already run, or you can run new speaker cables. For the sake of our demonstration, we're going to make four speaker wires, one of which we've already made. Typically, we want to put terminals on them, solder them so that they're actually pretty nice. You can use wire furls, you can use spade connectors. There's a variety of different ways to do this. So we're gonna make them look like this. They're soldered with heat shrink for better contact. We have four output terminals, one of which is A, one of which is B. The A corresponds to the top row, B corresponds to the bottom row. Now, you can see on the RCA inputs, we also have an A and a B, white being left channel, red being right channel. You'll connect your fronts to A and your rears to B, and then that way you'll maintain fader and balance. In this setup, we're going to connect four speakers. We're going to assume that you've either run the speaker wires to the speaker location, to the factory amp, or to the factory head unit and make your connections up there. So we'll just make our connections. Each one of the four terminals, you have a left front, left rear, right front, right rear. So our first connection will be the left rear, or in this case, left B. So our second connection will be right B or right rear. Our next connection in this four channel setup will be the left front or left A. So our very last connection will be the right front or right A. In this next setup, we're gonna set up the amp as a three channel system. We're gonna assume that you're gonna use the bridged output to power a single sub, and then you're gonna use channels A, left and right, to power your front speakers. On this amplifier, only the B channels can be bridged. That's noted actually on the amplifier with the statement on the bottom, and then you can see that you'll use the positive of the left channel, and then you'll use the negative of the right channel. 
the two other terminals you're not gonna use. But we'll make our connections, our left front speaker connections to the left, and we'll make our right front speaker connections to the right. So this will be our output to our single subwoofer. Now one thing you do need to take into consideration is most amplifiers, at least class AB, can only operate at four ohms bridged. Make sure to check out our other video on how to figure out impedance of subwoofers. But in this case, this amp will drive a single subwoofer without much problem, unless it's a competition level type sub. So the next connection we'll make in this three channel system is our left front speaker. Our next connection will be the right front speaker. In this setup, we're gonna set the amp up as a five channel, and you're only looking to power one sub. So what we'll do is we'll have our connections to our front, rear, and our subwoofer. When setting up any amplifier as a multi-channel, you need to double check the load. In our case, this amplifier is rated to do two ohms stereo and four ohms bridged. You can double check that by always looking at the instruction manual and they'll give you those ratings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our subwoofer connection first by going to the bridge channels and that's on B. Then we're gonna make our parallel speaker connections to the left and to the right. First, our subwoofer connection. We have our output to our sub. Now we'll make our parallel speaker connections. So what we're gonna do is combine the positive terminal of the front speaker and the positive terminal of the rear speaker and do exactly the same for the negatives. And now we'll make our parallel connections for our right speakers. And so now we have our four speaker outputs and our one subwoofer output. In this setup, we'll configure the amp for a setup what is known as dual bridge. In this configuration, you need to double check your amplifier instruction manual first to see if it supports dual bridge and to see what load it will support in bridged mode. Dual bridged is useful for running two subwoofers off of a four channel or using it for front speakers to actually up the power output. So we'll go ahead and make two connections, one of which will be, in our case, we'll do a hypothetical dual subwoofer. One will go to one sub, the other will go to the other sub. In our final configuration, we'll say that hypothetically, this is a two channel amp. So what we're gonna do is set up four speakers on a two channel. That takes the exact same configuration as we did in the five channel, just paralleling the two outputs. So disregard the two bottom sets of outputs and we'll pretend that this is only a two channel and parallel the speakers. So now that we've had two channels connected, we'll connect the right two. Now we have our four channel outputs and we've powered our front and rear speakers, all four of them from a two channel. So hopefully this helps clear some things up. So we've run over two channel, four channel, three channel and five channel and dual bridged. I wanna thank James for allowing me to get in on another video. Hopefully this helped clear some things up. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.